Okay, so you may be curious about exactly how it is that these wall types come to be. And as you might expect, when I click on the architecture tool, or sorry, architecture tab, build panel wall tool, I see a decent list here of different wall types, but obviously that's not going to cover every situation and every type of wall that you need to incorporate into a project. So what do you do when you need to customize a wall? Uh, I would start off with a really simple existing wall, make a duplicate of it, and then modify the layers. So let's choose to begin this generic, let's say 200 millimeters. And now Revit's all set to create a wall based on that type. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on Edit Type. That will bring up the Type Properties. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a duplicate. The reason that we do that is if I make any sort of changes to this type, then every instance of this type in the project is going to edit or be modified as well. So if I had other instances of this generic 200 millimeter wall type in the project, then whenever I made changes to the type, obviously it wouldn't just be the one that I'm about to draw. All other instances of that type would automatically update, which is what I don't want. So I want to make something unique. So it's important that I make a duplicate. So just click on that duplicate button and it'll ask you for a name. And we're just going to call this our custom exterior wall. That will now appear here in this little window for the type name. And now we can make whatever changes we want. These will be independent of the type properties for the original that we began with. So we're not in any danger anymore of making any sort of unexpected changes to instances of that original 200 millimeter wall type. What I want to do now, just to go ahead with the customization of this wall, is click here on the Edit button right beside Structure. And it brings up this little window. So because we started with a generic wall type, we just have uh, a really basic layout here of a middle sort of main material layer. And then we have core boundaries on the uh, exterior side. Note here in our little table that it notes the uh, exterior side on the top and the interior side on the bottom. We're going to add a few more layers to this. Uh, let's start by clicking here on this little preview button. So it's going to give us a graphic indication here on the left of how this wall is looking as we build it. And this will also be our first introduction into materials in Revit. So we will first specify the function, and then we'll specify the thickness, and then we'll worry about what sort of material we want to have for the layers of this wall. So at the moment, of course, as I said, because we're just dealing with a really simple, basic, generic type, it just displays this simple, just basic gray. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep our core boundaries on the exterior and on the interior. We're going to click on the number 2, which is row 2, which is where our structural sort of generic 200 millimeter layer is at the moment. We'll click on number 2 and we'll click Insert. And we're going to add, let's start off with uh, an additional 5 layers. Sorry, an additional 4 layers. So just click that 4 times. Now, they'll just basically copy whatever was above them when we clicked on that insert button so they all kind of look the same. Now notice our original 200 millimeter layer is at the bottom. And we're going to start with one on the, on the uh, top here, close to the exterior. So we'll specify a function first and then as I said we'll uh, do a thickness and then we'll worry about the material inside. So let's start by clicking in this spot. So notice that I'm clicking in an area where there doesn't appear to be a button. When I click there it will allow me to choose a function. This will be our exterior. So we're going to specify that this is a finish layer. Just choose finish one. The thickness of this is going to be 90 millimeters. And notice already here in our graphic window, we're getting an update. We now have two distinct layers. Um, and we're going to change the material of this. So once again, in an area where there appears not to be a button, just click here in the right side here of the material column for our row number two where it says by category. And when you do that, it'll think a little bit and then it's going to load up the material browser. And 
And in the search window, right at the top, where your cursor is by default, just type in brick. And it sorts through all the pre-made materials and brings up the two that have brick in their title. We'll just choose the one that says brick common. Now, notice over here on the right that the way that this brick material appears is based on two different categories. There's a graphics category for the brick, and there's also an appearance category for the brick. The appearance category applies when we want to render, so we'll be able to get a photorealistic re representation of the brick. But for the most part, we're just going to concern ourselves with the graphic representation, which is what, you'll sh what will show up when we've got our shaded style activated. So we'll choose brick, click OK here. Now you can see that it updates our little preview window so we can actually see some brick here on the outside of this wall. It's at 90 millimeters and we're going to keep kind of populating these additional layers below it as we work towards the interior. So on row number three where it currently says structure, click to the right where there doesn't appear to be a button and we're going to select thermal air layer. We're going to set the thickness of this to be, let's say, 25 millimeters. And the material here, once again, same process, just click over here where there doesn't appear to be a button. It'll bring up our material browser a little more quickly than it did the last time. Now that we've actually got it sort of loaded up into memory. And in the search window at the top, type in air. Now, how is air a material, you ask? Yes, question? No, it was already there. Like, okay. The oh, was it? Okay, good. Yeah, just uh, just to kind of get you familiar with using the search window, obviously, starting with A, you didn't have to really do it that time. But click on air, and this will just be empty space. This is just a blank air space. This is the, um, the ventilated uh, rain screen cladding. So this is just a gap between the uh, insulation and then the brick on the outside. So it's a 25 millimeters. We'll then keep moving down here to row four. The function of this fourth row here is going to be thermal air again, and this is going to be insulation. And we'll move over to the thickness column, and uh, let's give this a nice energy efficient 150 millimeters worth. Try to be compliant with our local energy code requirements. And once again, once we specify the thickness, we'll click here in the material column. <coughs> and we can type in rigid for a search term. We'll select rigid insulation. I'm going to make one other little subtle uh, change here. Um, notice how when I select rigid insulation, the default graphic style or appearance uses this middle value gray. To mimic what happens in the real world, I'm going to click on this and change the color to one of the colors that you typically see this material <laughs> associated with this material, like a light blue. Could be a pink or a yellow. So I'll just choose a light blue color. Not a crucial step. I can certainly customize the wall without doing this, but it's just going to help me graphically over here on the left to kind of identify that I have an insulation layer there. So just any old light blue is fine. Click OK. And then you'll see it update here in the graphic window on the left. Down to row 5. Under function, we're going to specify a membrane layer. And we're going to change up the order a little bit here and just go right to material. <clears throat> so click here on the right again. Same method. Brings up the material browser. For a search term, I'm going to type in retarder. No giggles. And I'll select the vapor retarder, which is going to be what we will use here as an air vapor barrier. Click OK. And it actually doesn't have to have a thickness. We can leave it at zero. Now, why bother? It's not going to show up graphically. Why bother putting it in there? Well, it just can affect how the wall performs. So remember I was talking about some of these types of values here. Notice that it's tracking the 
thermal mass and resistance. So uh, even if a layer doesn't have any substantial thickness, it can still be sort of factored in when we do energy analysis, which is not something we'll get to in this class, but just so that you know um, a way that you typically build a wall. And then we'll kind of mimic this process when we do the actual office building assignment. Okay, we'll move down to row six. We need a uh, sheathing layer. So once again, under function, click there. We'll choose substrate. The thickness of this is going to be 12.7 or half an inch. And once again, under material, uh, we're not going to have anything in the library that gives us exactly what we're after, but we'll just choose gypsum wallboard. That's as close as we need to get. And I will choose OK. And you can now see that sheathing layer here. We need some other layers, though, because we need to have a steel stud layer and an interior gypsum layer. So our uh, additional four, that wasn't quite enough. We'll add a couple more. So if you click on row seven, the core boundary, and click insert two more times, we'll get the two additional rows or layers that we need. And on row seven, for function, we're going to choose structure at the top. Thickness is going to be 152.4. And for material, we're going to just search for steel stud. Oh, metal stud is what they call it. So it actually brings up metal stud anyway. So just type in um, metal stud or steel stud. It brings up the metal stud layer. We'll click OK. And I'm just going to go through this a little bit quickly, and then I'll just leave it on screen so that you can kind of check your numbers against this. The eighth row, the final, is going to be our interior gypsum layer. So function again will be finish in this case. The thickness is going to be, we'll go for 15.9, 5 eighths. You can use finish one. And then for material, I'm just going to go back to that gypsum wall board. And I'll use the second one, which is the gypsum wall board in brackets number one, just so there's a little bit of distinction there. If we want to customize one of the materials, it won't affect the other one. And there we go. So as I said, I'll leave that on screen just so that you can have a closer look at that and compare what you've got. All right, so once you've got all your layers, your dimensions, your materials all set up, then you just click OK two times. And now that appears uh, in your type selector as one of your custom wall types. So you are free now to start actually creating walls with that type. And the good thing is, is as we pointed out before, we've made a duplicate, so there's no risk here when we make changes to this type that will mess up the original one, which was the generic 200 millimeters. So I'll go to the architecture tab and click on the wall tool. And now I can just start drawing like I normally do. And use my line tool, for example. And there we go. So there's my custom wall with all the graphic representation that I had specified. And whenever I need to make a new wall, even though I may go to a different type, as you would expect, if I do something different here, and then I want to go back and make something like this, it'll be available in that type selector. And we named it custom exterior wall. The other thing to remember about this is that you can copy paste this into another project. So if I start another project and then remember that the wall type that I'd created in my previous project is one that I need again, I would just click on this, hit control C to copy it to the clipboard. And then when I go into the new project file, just control V to paste it in there. And then it too will become part of the library of system family files, as they call them, available in the type selector whenever I want to do a new wall.